So we're in a series on building blocks, and we're thinking about the ways that even though faith is sometimes hard for us to have in the midst of a life that is often unsettled, we are called to have these blocks of, of just strength and hope that can hold us when life gets hard. And we've journeyed from this reminder of doubt being an important part of our faith where Jesus meets us, to searching for Christ among us, to being reminded that we are made in our very core for each other and being challenged to be a people who question. And tonight we are gonna remember how the power power of story can hold us and draw us closer to God. We hear that and see that in the Apostle Paul, and we can see that in our own lives. You know, a couple years ago, I was visiting a church with a friend and her young daughter, and it was time for children's time. And children's message, children's time, whatever you want to call it, when the kids come forward during a typical worship service is one of my favorite parts of the service. I love it personally when I'm a part of it at my church, um, but I also love it watching what other people do and how they interact with the children. You can never predict what is going to happen during children's time. But the kids came up to the front and the pastor sat down and he said, well, what do you have for me today? And I was really confused. One of the kids pulled something out of a brown bag and handed it to the pastor. And I was shocked as the pastor just took this object in their hand and began to do an entire children's lesson around this object, reminding them of how they could see God around that. As it came to a close, I turned to my friend and I said, does he do this every week? And she said, yeah, every week a different person brings something in and he just starts talking about how this reminds him of God. And by this time, her daughter had come back and she said, mama, how is it always a story about God? She hadn't realized that that was kind of the point of the thing. It was always going to be a story about God. Today's scripture might be less familiar for you. It's found in the book of Acts, and Paul is preaching to the church at Athens. We know Paul far more for his letters than for his preaching, far more for his founding and, and nurturing of the early church than for his preaching. But in today's scripture, Paul is preaching to the church at Athens. And much like this pastor who just took what was ever in a bag and began to point to God through it, Paul took an everyday object that the Athenians had seen every day and began to explain how it could remind them of God. He takes what's right in front of them and uses this image to tell the story of the God of the universe, the one who created and the one who sustains and the one who redeems. He begins to remind them that this unknown God to whom they have built an altar is not really unknown at all. In fact, there is a whom that they have been worshiping, uh, even though they have been trying to focus on a what. Using what is familiar, he begins to proclaim the story of God and witness a faith story that is in the past and the present and the future. From this one object of an altar, Paul tells the story of our God who is never far from us, who has done all of this, Paul says, so that we will look out for him and reach for him and find him. When we moved to Myersville, we moved into a house that had far more light switches than I could ever imagine were necessary. The first three months were spent certainly unpacking, but also trying to figure out where all of these light switches went and why there were so many of them. It didn't make any sense either. The one at the bottom of the stairs controlled something at the top of the stairs. Something in the kitchen uh, operated something all the way across the house. Nothing seemed to make any sense and there was really no rhyme or reason. And quite frankly, it was frustrating. It made me feel like I didn't belong in my own home if I couldn't figure out which light switch to use. One day, as I was leaving for work, I got so frustrated, I just hollered that I really felt like this would never be our house. And when I came home from work, I walked into the kitchen to find labels on our light switches, left and right over the correct ones. At the bottom of the stairs, there was a light switch that said fan and another one that said hallway. In our bathroom, one said outlet and one said exhaust. Chris had taken time that day to use a label maker, a label maker and point out the truth, put labels everywhere because it was just too hard for me to see. This is what Paul does for the church at Athens. He's certainly not the first. Jesus does this in his ministry too, using everyday items like vines and water and sheep and coins to tell of the kingdom of God. This past week, I was in a class with a Hebrew Bible teacher who was quick to remind us that it didn't start with Jesus. In fact, Jesus is drawing on a long tradition of prophets in our Old Testaments who did the same thing, sometimes using the same images. Isn't Psalm 23 one of a shepherd, right? Of a God who cares for us in the same way as God would care for sheep. Our Bible is full of stories using everyday objects, everyday people, 
pointing people back to God. You know, people ask me what the role of a preacher is, and whether to children or to adults, it's to share the story of God and the story of God's people. It's bearing witness to how God is indeed near, how God is indeed working, how God is indeed enveloping our very stories to bring life and hope and healing. But that's not only the job of a preacher, pulpit, video camera, or not. We as a people are a people who claim Christ. And every day we are given the awesome opportunity to point to God in the midst of the story of our everyday lives. Pointing to the story of God, which is our own, we seek to see the ways that God is moving and working. And that is important when life feels overwhelming, when feelings of of crumbling are surrounding us, when we're not sure which way is up. These stories, the stories of our lives and the stories of the lives of people we know and the stories of God contained in our scripture are our stories that can hold us when life falls apart. Stories have the power to inspire us to take the next faithful step and stories can help us see God even when we feel like God feels unknown. So take a minute to think about your story. If I were to ask you, what are the most important stories of your life, what would come to mind? Choose one, one important story, and think about it for a minute. Who were the people that were there? Who were the people that were around you? Where did it happen? What did you see? What did you smell? What did you touch? Were there ways that you could experience God's provenient grace, the grace that goes before in that moment? Were there ways that you knew that you were not alone? Was there someone there who witnessed mercy or hope or healing? And look, if the answer is no, if the story of your life is a story of brokenness, if the story that you are thinking of was one that feels unredeemable, remember that a whole lot of our stories found in the scriptures are that of lament, of people crying out, of the very long days of waiting for resurrection. This week, I hope you'll take time with that story or with other stories. Perhaps there's someone here at Common Table Online that you can chat with about your story. You can text with me. My phone number is in the notes if you want to do that. But as you tell this story, invite the person you're witnessing to to help you see how God might be moving, to help point out a God that sometimes feels unknown, how this altar, which absolutely might be dedicated sometimes to an unknown God, can be instead one where God, who is not very far from us, is working. Where God is working so that we might look for Him and reach out to Him, just as Paul promises the church at Athens. This week, take time with that story. And my hope is that as you do, you would find the power of story and add that to your building blocks. For every story is a story of God. As God's people, every story is a story of God. How is it always a story of God? Would you pray with me? God of grace and God of glory, we thank you for the stories of your love and grace that hold us. We ask that this week you would help us sit with the stories of our lives and see how you are moving and working still. May we begin to point to those stories, to cling to those stories, to find hope in those stories as we build our faith. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen.